Welcome to Business Talk. I'm your host, Michael Avery, and today we're focusing on a critical resource, water. It's not just essential for life, but it's the core of sustainable development and economic growth. Yet the challenges we face in managing this precious resource are both complex and multifaceted, as most South Africans are becoming well aware, with water outages now outstripping load shedding, certainly uh, in many areas in Johannesburg. To unpack these issues, I'm joined now by Dr. Rembu Makhoba, who's a seasoned expert with over two decades of experience in water research. Dr. Makhoba currently serves as the manager of the CSIR Water Centre, where he leads uh, the charge in developing cutting-edge technologies and solutions to address our water challenges. Uh, Dr. Makhoba, great pleasure having you in our studio today. Maybe you can start off by telling us a little bit more about the centre and, and the work that you're doing as the CSIR Water Centre. So we are interested or we are more focused on the development of technology that support good or and reliable water services. We are having a challenge in the country. We've got a number of challenges that include the water losses. Uh, most of our wastewater treatment plants are not working. They are dysfunctional, both for drinking water and also for wastewater. So we get involved in making sure that we address the challenges associated with it. Uh, lots of challenges, and we know non-revenue water loss, as they, as they call it, a big one, uh, as well as the wastewater treatment uh, facilities and a lack of investment in uh, the water infrastructure. What would you say are the priority challenges, given that there are so many that the century is focusing on at the moment? Yeah, the challenges are, are many, and we can't address all of them at the same time. But what is key to the water sector currently is the non-revenue water. This is the water that we lose through illegal connection or through water leakages as a result of aging infrastructure. We also have got a number of wastewater treatment plants that are dysfunctional currently, and they are contributing significantly to the water pollution or water resource pollution. We also have a recent challenge, a load shedding, where we need to have a a self-sustainable or self-powered water and wastewater treatment works. So at CSAR, we are gearing towards developing technology that addresses challenges like those. You might have realized or recognized that most of our water resources are no longer the same quality that we used to have before, both in quality and also in quantity. Recently, we had a cholera in Hamaskral areas. We have been also involved in surveilling COVID-19 using wastewater. It's a way of monitoring the extent in which COVID-19 is prevailing in the, in, in the, in the, in the country. Well, that is really interesting that you can pick it up uh, by um, researching the, the wastewater in a particular area. Given that, you know, what are the unique resources or technologies or capabilities that the CSR Water Centre brings to bear on some of these uh, challenges? At CSAR, we are positioned ourselves in terms of research groups so that we've got a team dedicated to address a certain set of problems. We have got what we call a smart water and wastewater infrastructure research group. This research group addresses challenges associated with the infrastructure uh, maintenance and operations. So we have got the capability to deal with the process engineering. This in involves modeling of the infrastructure or the distribution network so that we are able to pick up the challenges before it becomes a serious problem in the country. We are able to develop what we call dynamic hydraulic model. This is a technology that identifies potential challenges or potential faults along the distribution network so that we can dispatch the maintenance team to address the challenges here. Before that, we also have what we call smart water analytics and solutions. This is more of a laboratory based solution. In our laboratories, we focus mostly on waterborne pathogens, where we are able to test all those potential diseases that are associated with water. Our laboratory is ISO 17025 accredited, which gives us the integrity and the trust from the public that we are able to do the work that they can, they can trust. The last one is the Smart Water Use Research Group. Smart Water Use Research Group focuses on the resource so that we can diversify the water resources that we are having. Currently, as a country, we are over-relying on the surface water or rivers. We need to explore groundwater, desalination, 
and also water reuse by recycling the water that we are getting from the wastewater. So those are some of the technologies that are very much important if we are to diversify the water resources that we have. And as we know, South Africa is amongst the, the 30 driest countries in the world. I just recently returned from a trip to Namibia where you know, they're experiencing um, a hundred year, one in a hundred year drought. So you know, very much on our doorstep, this issue of being much smarter with uh, a critical and scarce resource such as that. Uh, given that the, the, the center has all of these capabilities, what can partners, uh, if, if someone in the private sector, large manufacturing concern, for example, wants to come and work with you and say, how do we better use the water through our plant and factory? What can they expect if they approach you for a partnership? The, our partners can expect to, to receive services associated with the non-conventional water pollutants and also water quality management based on our history and experience in water quality monitoring and also the development of methods for those pollutants that were not initially considered for drinking water monitoring or for wastewater monitoring. Our laboratory is well equipped to test for such pollutants. So the service of for testing ecotoxicology in their water become very much important because the quality of raw water is not the same as the quality of wastewater. So when you look at the raw water from rivers, it's not the same quality as the raw water that we receive from the wastewater for obvious reason. So we need specialized testing solutions or testing services to be able to provide confidence to the consumers that their water is safe for drinking purposes. In terms of infrastructure, we are also able to provide decentralized wastewater solutions where we are able to have off-grid system. If you are to drill boreholes in a remote areas, we are able to treat if that water quality is not safe for drink as raw as it is. We are able to drill, treat on site, and then provide the water to the consumers in a good drinking water quality. That's really interesting given that I think Many local communities uh, might need that kind of decentralized solution as we look to improve um, the quality of life, not just for those in middle-class suburbia like uh, many of us and many of us watching, but it is those local communities often that need those kinds of solutions. So how are you um, thinking about addressing the concerns of local communities um, who might be underserved currently on the ground? Currently, at the CSAR, we have got a number of projects that we are running that really support the community and especially those that are in the marginalized areas. We, we are more involved in public health protections through surveillance of waterborne pathogens, whether in a, a rivers, in a drinking water on the taps. So we make sure that we understand the quality of, of the water that the consumers are getting by making sure that those known diseases and uh, diseases that are not known in South Africa but that have been proven to be available or, or found in water. So we are able to provide groundwater assessment and uh, also groundwater treatment on site to make sure that the community that is uh, underserved is also benefiting from that. We currently have a spring water project uh, in November in Limpopo province as well where we are promoting the access and also the infrastructure to spring water. Most of the time, the communities are sharing the spring water with the animals because of lack of a proper infrastructure to access water from the springs. So at CSAR, we develop a, a, a distribution network or we design a, a structure or infrastructure that will allow the piping of water from the streams to the community while putting a, a, a certain portion aside for, for environmental use and also for animals to consume and also for agricultural activities. And lastly, at CSAR Water Center, we are also playing an important role in terms of human capital development through various training and also a bursary programs. It's a way of making sure that we promote skills transfer in those communities that can benefit from some of the technologies that are not necessarily for high, highly qualified people so that they can assist 
us by implementing such technology in their areas without CSAR involvement. Mm, I mean, there's so much to unpack in that, and we obviously need kind of low-tech uh, skills, but also some low-tech solutions in communities to go along with high-tech solutions. And I think here yeah, um, of the Imalakleni wastewater treatment plant that was developed with, I think, Anglo Coal and BHP Billiton years ago using reverse osmosis to treat AMD. And then one of the byproducts was gypsum that the local community could then use to build low-cost housing with and then potable water sold back to the municipality. But, you know, to the issue around Imfuleni, monitoring is, is one thing and, and we know the water quality is, is poor. Um, how, do we, how do we fix these problems, you know, and, and how do we get to a stage where we start overcoming these challenges of infrastructure and our wastewater treatment facilities is this a research focus area that uh, you're potentially working on? Absolutely. We we have got through five main research focus areas that addresses the magnitude of challenges that we are facing as a water sector. We, we have got water assessment and monitoring focus area where we are addressing challenges associated with water resource management. This also talks to the issue of uh, impact of uh, wastewater treatment works that are not functional because the discharge from these wastewater treatment works end up on the receiving water bodies. Uh, there might be rivers, there might be groundwaters. So we have got a dedicated program to monitor and also to provide solutions in terms of mitigating the impact of, uh, of such a wastewater impact on the, on the receiving water bodies. So at CSAR, we have got a team that, that is very diverse. We have got engineers and scientists working together where we are able to detect the problems and also solve that problem uh, on the spot. We, we also have got what we call a, a surface groundwater interaction. It is a very complex issue because whatever that is happening on the surface end up having a significant impact on the ground. On the ground. Yeah. So if groundwater is it's, it's clean over a period, it might end up being affected if the surface water is not clean enough because the ground the groundwater relies on the quantity and the quality of the surface water. We, we are also very, very worried about the water and the wastewater treatment because uh, some of our national water treatment or wastewater treatment are not working properly. So we cannot sit back at CSAR and do nothing about this. We provide support to the state to address those challenges by having a dedicated infrastructure condition assessment to understand the conditions of those infrastructure that we rely on them to treat our water. When, once we understand the status of the conditions, then we are able to provide recommendations on what needs to be done to get those wastewater and water treatment plants back to their functional state. In some instances, we don't only make recommendations, but we get involved and work with the uh, water utilities to address the challenges that we are facing as a country. The distribution network is also one of the areas that we focus on. Because of the aging infrastructure and also the lack of technology in the past, where we didn't really have a good way of uh, mapping our distribution network. We now need to digitalize our network and understand where our network is and what challenges are we expecting or anticipating in those areas so that we are able to have a clear plan on how to replace the aging infrastructure rather than being reactive yeah. to, the, to the problem. The last one is what we call integrated program where it's all about to secular economy. When we are dealing with the wastewater treatment uh, technology, we don't want to look at wastewater as just a waste, but we want to look at wastewater as a potential resource for other minerals. Whether you are dealing with acid mine drainage, long after the mine closure, when you deal with the treatment of acid mine drainage, there is still a value in some of the minerals that you can get out of that. Mm -hmm. So that generates income stream. It's a way of making sure that we are able to attract some of the investment for, for the purpose of treating that water. I mean, that really is circular thinking in practice. Uh, and I think what it demonstrates, uh, Dr. McCorber, is the deep well, no pun intended, of 
uh, resource and skill that you have at the centre. Uh, you mentioned collaboration and partnership earlier. If um, someone's watching this and they want to approach you with a potential collaboration or maybe with a challenge or even a solution, how do they go about getting in, in, getting in touch? We can have a joint, what we call a joint technology agreement. That's when we work with partners to develop a particular technology to address a, a common problem. We can also partner through memorandum of understanding where we identify a particular problem of interest between the entities and then we co-invest and, uh, and come up with a, with a solution for that particular problem. In some instances, they can uh, directly contract us to provide service to them for whatever problem that they might be having so that we are able to deal with this problem directly by, by, by deploying the technology that is already existing or by devising a new, complete new technology that is relevant to the, to the solutions. Somewhere we also localize technology. If technology exists in some of the international countries, there's no need for us to waste our resources yeah. by developing a new technology. I, in that instance, we will partner with international partners and be able to localize their technology in South Africa and trade South African solutions. Of course, there might be a need to make sure that we tailor made that solution to suit South African uh, challenges because it's not always a copy and paste in South Africa when we address those yeah. solutions. Uh, ab absolutely, but it's encouraging to hear, I mean, when you mentioned the digitalization of our, our water infrastructure and maybe creating a digital twin where you can then model and even conduct predictive maintenance to your earlier point and see where a particular pipe might burst. And, and I think in that spirit, uh, it's great to hear that the CSR is taking the lead here and inviting partners to come and collaborate in solving what are very large challenges that I don't think any one particular party can solve by themselves. So Dr. Ramakorba, thank you very much. And a great pleasure having you here on Business Talk, uh, finding out a little bit more about the work that you're doing at the center. Take care. Thank you very much. Uh, I appreciate the opportunity. And for those who wanted to contact us directly, you can use our email, uh, uh, water center manager. Uh, at uh, csir.co.city. Fantastic. And uh, we're going to post all of those contact details underneath the video. Thank you uh, very much for watching Business Talk here on businesstech.coza. Uh, I hope you were as encouraged as I am following that conversation that, yes, the challenges are, are large and complex, uh, but we are certainly uh, and not without the skills and the requisite desire to help uh, solve and rectify many of them in the water sector. From me, Michael Avery, Take care.